hear that bass sound? That's, a, that's actually the noise chip. And then you can see here, you actually do hear noise. That sounds like noise when the snare drum is actually hitting, but that bass sound is actually the noise chip too as well. So, talking about the bass sound, like the bass guitar sound. That is the noise, yeah, going on there, believe it or not. Yeah, that's a trick. It's basically a little trick. You can actually do it inside the tracker. There's a command for that as well, so. Um, cool. So, let me click out of that. Now, um, we're going to hear, a lot of times, they release the Sega Master System version along with the Genesis version right at the same time. That's what actually happened with this game, um, because they were trying to hit the market for, like, overseas, because... A lot of people were kind of, you know, overseas they couldn't really afford the full Genesis, so, uh, anyways. So here's the Genesis version of this song. Same song. Yeah. You can see it's out a little bowler here. Minus baby. Right, anyways, that's, that, that song rules, by the way. Like Here's another one. This, uh, this is another one from uh, YS3. Ease. Ease, whatever it is. Ease. I didn't actually play the game. Yeah. This is like typical Gallop. Galloping kind of RPG style thing. Bucky ripped this one back here. This is his channel, by the way. Xbox 2003. <laughs> okay, so here's a. Uh, you can actually hear the PSG really kind of clear in that one a little bit. Um, this is one of my favorite Streets of Rage songs here. I'll put it up there. It's not finished, but um, this is something I started working on. I've actually written, this is the only song I've written with this tracker so far, yeah. believe it or not, and I'm teaching it. <laughs> so, no, whatever. And you almost lost it. Oh, that doesn't sound loud at all. all right. Sure enough. Anyways, you guys get the idea. There's a little bit too much bass on it, but that's all right. Uh, I got to do a little bit of mixing on the track. But um, so you guys can kind of kind of get the idea. That it's really important to kind of just listen to as much uh, music as possible, um, and then try to maybe even copy some of the, the, the instruments that you might hear. Um, and we're, I'm actually going to talk about that in, in a minute, how you can actually just verbatim rip the instrument right out of the uh, game. Um, so also, too, if you're trying to uh, learn a tracker, you, you should probably read the fucking manual. You know what I mean? <laughs> so there's an English manual, and it's uh, very good. So probably you probably shouldn't bug Shearer too much. Um, also remember that the uh, TFM tunes that you might have written with that old tracker import right into the new tracker, VGM Music Maker. So, uh, hey, you'll know read the fucking manual. Uh, 
Okay, so tracking basics. Uh, I'm going to get an inside the tracker now and start trying to make some noise with it. Um, so let's do something here, and I'm going to try to, I'm just going to load some samples into the tracker. And um, so the way you do that, so if you look up here, this is patterns, instruments, samples, information, and preferences. By the way, if you're not getting a good sound out of uh, the tracker right off the bat, if you like open up some of the example files and you're not getting something that sounds good, um, it might be your buffer sound, or your buffer count, or your size. Um, Usually, you know, if you go too far with the buffer size, um, you might just it might just start sounding like crap, basically. Or if you go too small, you just gotta mess around with the numbers and see what comes up and which is good for your particular computer. Um, okay, so let me load some samples in here. Okay, so this is the sample window, and um, the global PCM quality here is basically what all the samples will be played back at once you export it as like a VGM when you're done with the song. Um, so you don't want to, uh, you, I usually keep it around 1600 or or 16,000 or 8,000 because um, that's like what the game sound like. I actually like them crunchier. I don't want them like really high quality, like 32 or something like that. You know, a lot of the samples that I like the most are like those ones that sound like really rough or kind of, you know, crappy or something like that. So um, anyway, so you can just, go over, mouse over with this, and it'll just tell you exactly what these are. You can see this says open a sample or a group of samples. So I'm gonna do that. And I'm already on my Sonic Trump samples folder here, so I'm gonna hit that. And now I got a little bass drum here I can get play. Okay, and then I'm gonna load in a snare as well here. Okay, and you can change the global, uh, you can change like the gain for them to make them louder. If you see, I'm kind of expanding the waveform there. That guy's already kind of the max, but you can make a clip too if you want. Sounds pretty cool when you do that. Uh, so now you got um, uh, basically two samples, okay? So now I can go back over the tractor space, and if you remember from before, only the sixth FM channel can load samples. So um, the way you do that is, in the effects column here, is you just put S like that. You can see I just put S0 and you heard a bass drum. And then if I'll put in, a, I'll put in like another one here, like this, but I'll change this to a one. And there's my snare. So it's easy, easy as that. That's pretty easy. And I'm gonna kinda like, um, make this pattern a little bit less long here by going like this. This way I have just like a boom, ch, boom, ch. Let's see. So you go, so you uh, do some drum beats, like really easy. That is like the easiest thing in the world. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, again, you can see you have all these FM channels here and then some PSG. These are all for the PSG channels down here. Okay, so then I'll, what am I supposed to do here? Okay, let me save this as empty. Yes. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, make an FM bass sound uh, with algorithm zero. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna go back in here. And um, let's do that for a second. So now I'm gonna go into the instruments um, panel here. And this is where people most have a problem with this tracker. They're just like, okay, what the hell do I do? And they click on the keyboard here, and obviously there's no sound coming out when I'm, when I'm touching this. So I'm on, already on algorithm zero here. If you go like this, you can see all the different algorithms that I spoke about before here too. So I'm just gonna, you know, you could select these other guys here, but I'm just gonna select that one. Okay, so now, remember, you're gonna hear algorithm, or you're gonna hear Oscillator 4, which is the carrier because it's green. So we need to turn that guy up, basically. So um, one thing that's kind of weird is the numbers are backwards in this tracker. So 127 is like off. Zero is like way wicked loud. So you can see now it's in the red. He also added this thing too. If you make your instruments too loud in the Genesis, it will actually clip. It's like really strange sounding. It's because it has a really shitty DAC 
inside the YM2612 chip. But anyway, so I'm going to lower it a little bit. And then that's not going to sound like anything just yet because there's no uh, sustain here. So if I turn off the sustain, now I'm getting something that sounds like an envelope. So now you can hear somewhat of a sine wave, right? Let's see. You guys can hear that now. Um, cool. So, yeah, I need a chair here. Now, okay, so what we can do is now we can start adding, adding modulators to make the sound more complex. Um, so we could just actually copy what we did with some of the other ones. We can see that two was modulating it before the other guy, so let's do two. And I'll turn two up a bunch. And then add some of uh, this to it. Okay, now that's not doing much to it, but you can add the multi here. Okay, now we need the other guys basically in there to make it sound like something. So we're going to turn the other guys up as well. Oh, what's that sound? Is that you? Okay, there we go. So I turn them all on. Now you're getting something that sounds kind of fuzzy for a second, and then it kind of dies off. And if you hear it, it probably is going to sound like, if I actually turn the sustain rate like this on this one, you're going to hear a sine wave. Uh, you're going to hear this fuzz shit, and then a sine wave right after it, basically. You hear that? Okay, so basically what that was happening is these, these guys were modulating it for a second, and then toward, when it was getting towards the end, like over here, it just kind of chilled out. It was just turning into a regular sine wave that we heard before, basically. So it's as simple as that as making instruments in here. You just got to kind of mess with them and kind of uh, do a lot of different things. Now, there's a lot of math behind this, the ratios between how the oscillators work with each other, but you don't really need to know all that crap. It's not that important. You can just go in there and just start messing with things and kind of use that general uh, chart that I had before. And you'll get some kind of interesting stuff, so it's, it's not a big deal. A couple other knobs that are cool is like the uh, multi, which actually changes the uh, octave, basically, of some of the modulators and stuff, so you get some more weird sounds. Okay, so where am I getting that fuzz sound from? Does, does anybody know? Glenn. Yeah, from the feedback, basically. Which, which uh, oscillator is it? Well, number one, right there, because that's the guy that's feeding back on itself. That's the blue one. You guys can't see it's, it is actually blue, but the color is kind of weird. Um, so if I turn the total level down on that guy, you won't hear as much fuzz. Well, let me see. Sorry, lad. There we go. They all affect each other, basically. So, and then if you want more feedback, you can actually turn up the feedback knob. And then turn, maybe turn this guy up a little bit more. So you get like a really weird buzz sound. That'll make it come through more. So that sounds pretty cool. Uh, okay, let me see if I can get something cool. It almost has like a mouth harp, harp there or something. 
Okay, so anyway, so let me save that. So now I hope you guys have uh, an idea of how to make some instruments with that. Um, can you automate the, um, you know, all the knobs? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's coming. Okay. Yeah, that's what's actually pretty awesome. What's, how, what time am I at? Whoa, it's eight. I don't care. We can go a little later. I, I have a, uh, quite a bit more, basically. I'm, uh,